hey, it's Secure Digital Life, and it's live. It's insane. It's or it's a live or <laughs> something. It's alive. Who knows what happened? This is Doug White and Russ Boschman, who is here with somewhere. I'm, I'm not sure on, yeah. on at some angle to all these yep. other things. And this is our first live episode of the podcast. We've had other episodes that we already did about various and sundry things. And today we're going to talk about just what is cybersecurity. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, I was at a PG show. And I'm really hey. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> <laughs> it's another day. It's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You, oh, oh, you move my, you put my camera over here. Eh, there you cut. Go. Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good idea <laughs> at this point. We got a couple things to introduce to you, like this secret document that I that I have procured at great risk to life and limb from you know different people. But it's not really, but but it's kind of. I got it in the mail. I had to call somebody to see if I could show it even. And I was like, "Can I actually display this on camera?" And they were like, "Display what? what it doesn't it? exist." She was wondering what I was going to display on camera. And I was <laughs> like, "Yeah, who knows where that's going?" But. Uh, so we, we'll talk about all that and more and talk about some cybersecurity historical stuff. And like I even put in, in the background, you can see a VHS copy of Sneakers, the movie. Oh, yeah. If you've never seen that, yeah, it's VHS, so we can't watch it anymore. But <laughs> we can stream it on Netflix. Oops, I can't, I can't say that. Yeah. Netflix, you owe us 50 bucks uh, for that, that slip. Plug. Speaking of, should we introduce the hashtag? Yeah, I know. So you, why don't you do that? So we have a hashtag um, that Doug came up with, which is great. Um, it's at secure dig life. Yeah. And why why is it short? It's shortened because they won't allow well, more. Well, they wouldn't characters. be put secure digital life, oh. so I had to put secure dig life. Yeah, so at s e c u r e d i g l i f e. Yeah, and we're gonna we'll put that up after the show on, yeah, on in the uh, notes. Like wiki, and mm -hmm. and you can get it from there because I've got some other stuff to show you too. So. Mm -hmm. If you want to follow that, that's great. I'll start posting stuff about the show on there, so you'll be able to see what we're doing, and we'll put the topics up. And if you want to tweet uh, questions, one of the things I, I want people to be able to do is to tweet questions to the show and mm -hmm. say, you know, could you tell us what this means next week? And then we could explain stuff, especially if you're watching things like Security Weekly, mm -hmm. where you're going, I don't know what they're talking about, right. and you know, and so let's if ask you, Ruskin Doug. Oh well, yeah, and then Doesn't we can matter. we can tell you something that you won't know what we're talking about either, but it'll it won't be as clever <laughs> yeah. as what was on Security Weekly. Less clever. Yeah, less clever. I don't know. Forget it. Um, okay, so we're we're going to talk today about what is cybersecurity uh, to us. What is what does it mean to me to be in you know. Um, they had that on the 500th episode of Security Weekly too. Like, what is security to you? And mm -hmm. and I was like, well, it's employment. And I've been involved in this probably since it began almost. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm not quite that old as, as Turing or somebody. And uh, <laughs> I had originally put Alan Turing on the sheet. And I was like, well, he died in like 52. So mm -hmm. that was a little before my time. But, mm -hmm. but uh, all this, this culture of security started really in the 70s. And when I first got involved in it, there was a lot of interaction between people. And all the people that were doing all these things were engineers and computer science people. So it was like Nerd Fest 9000 or something <laughs> like that. And, you know, that's, that's where people, you know, you start talking about, you know, piping something to another process and people get all sweaty or whatever. But as, as the world expanded, things got more complicated because suddenly you had, like, all of you guys and everybody else in the whole world got involved in, in cyber. And that made it really, really complicated because now there's, there's an actual threat. Because when we were doing it and it was all computer science nerds, everybody just took care of it. You know, if somebody yeah. was really obnoxious, they just squashed them. And they quit doing that. And I think as we saw convergence continue on between systems and, so and software and hardware and things be started coming together, 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 it, the, it opened up an even bigger portal for necessity of security. Right. And, and as it crossed borders, because yeah, next week on the show we want to talk about cybercrime. So mm -hmm. as opposed to cybersecurity, we're going to talk about cool stuff like cybercrime. But that stuff started going across the borders of the world. Mm -hmm. and, and that changed the whole way that the world worked because in the past you thought about what's called sovereignty. Mm -hmm. And sovereignty means that you, you've heard police officers are at least on TV say jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And I can't cross that. I don't have any mm -hmm. jurisdiction. And that was a problem with with the the internet 
because suddenly you could be attacked by someone who was nowhere near you, had never been anywhere near you, and was located in not just another county or another state, but in another country. So, right. you know, and, and trying to do deal with that is really complex right. and, and weird. Mm -hmm. So a lot of stuff started evolving about this, and some of it came out of movies, and that was one of the reasons I brought that movie in. Um, there were some classic movies that came about in the like late 70s and, eight, mm -hmm. and they were mostly in the 80s mm -hmm. that dealt with this. And, and the first one that I ever saw that I actually thought dealt with, with hacking was, was War Games. Yeah. What and was Matthew Broderick? Matthew Broderick yeah. and I don't remember what, what's... Let's play thermonuclear war, right? That's yeah, so yeah. where they've got, a, they've got this mainframe that's controlled by the Department of Defense and he hacks into it because he thinks he's hacking into some other like a computer game mm -hmm. and yeah, it's like the end of the world and all this stuff. It's kind of silly. Mm -hmm. Um... And he has like the. It's fun though. If you want to have some fun, get it and freeze frame the like shots on his on his room, and you can like try to catalog all the equipment they bolted together that makes no sense at all. <laughs> uh, some of it does, and some of it doesn't. But you can like look at it. It's like a history lesson, and just like stuff we drug out of the trash. It's like kind, my basement. Kind of like Hackers, which was a low budget Angelina Jolie's first. Yeah, movie. but Angelina Jolie was in it. It was our first movie, um, and it was kind of silly. Like, oh, you know, what's the? Pr and it was just Matthew Lillard was in it too. Mm, like yep. another defining. And it's uh, just totally room. silly and it's super and silly. Yeah, they don't even. Buy bother to like try i mean I, yeah. I i used to know this guy who was a filmmaker and i was, he was like look if you're going to do scenes about technology right. just call me yeah. call any tech person and they'll be happy to tell you yeah. about how it works i can give you linux commands that at least don't look stupid yeah i remember yeah. watching um uh reading a blog on wired once which was talking about the history of using uh, actual technology and hacking tools <laughs> in movies and they had said something along the lines that matrix was one of the first ones where you saw trinity yeah break out nmap Right, which was exactly. had never been, you know, it was all like you know asterisks and stars. And well, like, and I will tell you, if, yeah, I'll give you, I'll give a shout out to Fyodor who who wrote uh, who wrote InMap, mm -hmm. and InMap is a port scanning tool. And we haven't talked about things like port scanning tools in this show, so if you don't know what it means, well, you know, well, some other time. But mm -hmm. InMap was a port scanning tool, and Fyodor on his website insecure.org has a whole collection of scenes from movies where they're using InMap to represent everything from like national security <laughs> grids to like right. attack codes and all yeah. that. It's really funny to go through all those and see them. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, films like that. One, so one of the first films I ever saw that I really liked was Sneakers. Yep. And I really didn't like War Games. I mean, it's a classic and you have to watch it. Yeah. And, and, and Hacker as well, there is that whole nude scene with Angelina Jolie, but you know. Mm -hmm. But I mean... It's not a very good movie. Mm -hmm. And most of the hacker movies are horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, like Swordfish and all those movies are just awful. They're, they're just embarrassing, and you can't hardly watch them yeah. unless you just don't know anything about it, in which right. case then you don't care. So right. it's like me watching a movie about surgery. I'm just like, I don't know. Yeah. There's, uh, the, so an extension uh, into modern-day media with video games. You know, there are two major video games that came out. Um, now they're going to be franchised, or they're going to be franchises. Dot Hack, which is um, an interesting cartoony-style game, and then Watch Dogs, which which they're releasing a sequel to coming out, where you're literally you have a cell phone and it can hack the entire world. So you literally walk over to to a uh, near. You don't even have to be at. You can be near an ATM. You hit a button on your cell phone in the game, and then money comes out, and that's how you buy things <laughs> cool. or or hack cars or whatever. Wow! So it's, it's like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, or something. yeah, it's Grand Theft Auto for the hacking generation. Or no, I, I mean those are fun games. I mean the open-ended games are yep, like we'll do it, to yep. do a show about that. I, yep. I love to talk about games, and they're really cool. But as all that stuff evolved, then there started to be groups of people that were around like DEF CON. I mean, some of you may have never heard of DEF CON. I mean, it's a very famous thing. Mm -hmm. They have meetings annually. They have me yep. regional meetings. They have a meeting in Las Vegas like mm -hmm. every August. It's fun to go to. It's really huge now. It used to be really small. Now it's gigantic. Some of the guys with Security Weekly are like, you know, famous parts of it. They have a picture set in the other room of, you know, the faces of DEF CON or something mm -hmm. like that. And, I'm not on it. And they had Hope and Beyond Hope in the, in the 2000s that was, I think, sponsored by or part of 2600, yep. which was the Hacker Quarterly and magazine. All, Alt 2600, yep. which if you don't know what that means, it's it's about telephone frequency, mm -hmm. and, and it was Red an boxing, old, old magazine. Yeah, it was an old magazine that people used to subscribe to, and then it became, a, it's still a website. You can go there and look at stuff, and they have articles about different mm -hmm. kinds of hacking things. And and Google, uh, more, more, just a side note, Google the Captain Crunch whistle, uh, mm -hmm. which was really interesting. Just Google Captain Crunch whistle and hacking, and you'll yeah, see some but, interesting you things. You know, one of the problems for, for a lot of people today is, is they don't really understand how analog telephones worked, and, and all that stuff was about analog telephones. Mm -hmm. So when, when you have digital telephones, it do, this stuff yeah. doesn't apply anymore. So before you get Captain Crunch whistles and things and start blowing them into your cell phone. <laughs> it's not going to work that you way. You might want to tweet, and yeah, we'll, we'll straighten tones. you out on that. Yeah. But, but there was a lot of that stuff. And then, obviously, Security Weekly, which has now been running for 11 years, uh, they just shot their 500th 
episode uh, a couple of weeks ago. Tons of viewers. All, all of that's a community of people. And as you get interested in this or you have interest in this, it's, it's a good idea to get involved in that community because that's where all the information is. And mm -hmm. you need to learn what all those pieces are. And we'll talk about some of that, that on the show. Um, a second thing I wanted to bring up in this show was this, which I already mentioned or alluded to or something. Mm -hmm. This I got this in the mail yesterday, and it was it was sent to me by Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, who is who is a, a U.S. senator from the state of Rhode Island, and which is kind of cool. And this is a report that they wrote about cybersecurity, and I'm not going to talk about this whole report, but but it's a really interesting report. And at the end of the show, I'll put up the tiny roll I have for the report, if you want it. If you don't want it, it's fine. But they have a website about all this stuff. And they have all this stuff in here that's kind of interesting. And like one thing I wanted to quote from this was, this was two principles should, should guide cybersecurity creating consequences for foreign actors and incentivizing domestic actors to provide better cybersecurity. I'm like, okay, well, yeah, that's, that's true. Um, and what they're talking about there is how difficult it is for government. And this is sort of my point with this, is government has a lot of trouble with cybersecurity because government moves very slowly. Yeah. And these kind of reports, you know, they're trying to put things together, but I'm happy to see that they're starting to try to address these things. We've been addressing this in the industry for a long time, but government moves very slowly. And until just recently, there was a lot of people in government who didn't use computers. They're, they're like people say, I don't use computers. Everything is written by hand. And <laughs> somebody types in my emails for me. I, I've literally known people like wow. that. And so, so next week, we want to talk to some about cybercrime. Mm -hmm. But these guys are talking about scary stuff mm -hmm. because they start using terms, and I, I had some of them written down here somewhere. If I was really more organized, I would have all this put together. Um, but they were talking about nation states. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you know what nation states means, but nation states means like China or Russia or, or the United States. And they were talking about how the biggest threat is from these giant entities that have all kinds of resources. So one of the pieces of cybersecurity then is, and they got it written here, it's in, it's in my book. Dude. I shall read from the book, and thou shalt take the holy hand you grenade. Shall be smitten or smitten. And thou shalt smite, count smite to head. five, no, three, sir. So I'm Six. quoting Monty Python, which is probably it's the not holy allowed. Hand grade. Yeah. If you're out there, Palin, you know who you are. <laughs> Michael, not Sarah. No. Um, there are three categories of actions that create risk in cybersprays. Attack, espionage, and crime. Mm -hmm. And so probably the biggest problem, and, and I would actually go ahead and include j just like accident. They don't include that here because they're dealing with like a national level thing. But yeah. for most of us, accident is also a problem. I mean, if I accidentally mm -hmm. drop this in the, in the, in the river yeah. or in the ocean, which is even worse, and it gets submerged in salt water, it's not gonna work anymore. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, I may have lost a lot of important data if I don't have backups and I don't have all these things. So we wanna talk about stuff like that on the show too, but, uh, but I wanted to just introduce you to this report. And I will put up the, the link to this if you wanna read it, if you're interested in such reports. And, and it's actually pretty interesting. It's not very long, so you can read it pretty mm -hmm. quick. And, uh, but this, came, this was released by the federal government. So it's mm -hmm. actually, despite the name, it's actually a guide to the 45th president of the United States. It was a recommendations to the 45th president of the United States. Because when they wrote this, they didn't know who the 45th president of the United States was, I think. Or maybe they did. I don't know. Well, but I mean, it seems like a comprehensive guide. And well, yeah. I mean, this is just a recommendation. A paper, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like a white paper that came out of D.C. So yeah. you can see that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, we can talk about that some other time. Um, so how does cybersecurity then get involved in our everyday life? And it, I mean, that's one of the real roles of the show. So like, I'll let Russ, you want to talk about that for a second? Well, so we're, we're talking a lot about um, things like Internet of Things. And um, Doug's going to talk a little bit about micro, micro, micro drones and micro droning in a minute. Um, but, you know, it's important that as we have this convergence, and now I think we're actually in a state of divergence um, because we're getting things, I'm getting things like dash buttons, I'm getting things like, you know, my Apple Watch. So it's no longer about one piece of technology, yeah. it's about all technologies across all platforms being connected. And, and that opens up so many, so many holes, so many areas that, well, for potential threat. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, you went from a world where they had, where they had basically a mainframe computer that was right. controlled by me. Yeah. I mean, I liked, that was Thin cool. Clients, it was cool. Top, when yeah. I controlled a mainframe, <laughs> I was, you know, like all powerful. Yeah. 
And you came down and knocked on my little window, and you were like, hello, Doc, could, could I maybe get... No! <laughs> He's like, you cut me off in the parking lot last year, and then <laughs> never, ever are you going to get on again. It's not going to happen. But today, everything around you is now infused with technology. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I like that, because it's like my perfect world. Like, like, like when the Borg showed up on Star Trek, I was like, I'm there. Like, mm -hmm. sign me up, man. That's I was like, awesome. plug that me thing too. into yeah. my face. It was like, yeah. you know, I, I'll be locutious. You will be assimil like, like, assimilated. Like yeah, like John Luke, you don't want to be you don't want to be a Borg. Dude. I'd rather be seven of nine. Well, I'd rather, <laughs> I'm not, we're not getting into that. This is a, this is PG today. I'm not talking about him turning into seven of nine. I don't even know what that means. And everything's cool with me, but you know, it's like wow. But but the idea that all of a sudden that you're you know you're surrounded by immense amounts of technology. I mean, I mean, this thing here is more powerful than than you know every computer in the whole world was in 1975, and suddenly. This thing is controlling so many pieces of everything around you, and then you start adding things like I like watches, watches. And, and I'm gonna add another piece to it. Start adding medical equipment. Yep. You know, you can now start talking to people about they have pacemakers which control your heart rate that are controlled by Bluetooth. Programmed by Bluetooth. Yeah. yeah. So you're like on an app on your phone and it's like you actually get it mixed up with like angry birds and you know and burst your heart or something. <laughs> and, but I mean, imagine the kind of threat that exists to somebody when I start talking about hacking a signal to somebody's pacemaker. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, who would do that? That would be insane. And I'm like, somebody would do it. Somebody I mean, there's somebody that would do it. And then you, you add the Internet of Things. So you'll hear a lot of talk on this show about Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. And Internet of Things is a term that's used all the time to mean basically all these smaller things that surround your life. So a thermostat. Mm -hmm. A pacemaker. A refrigerator. A refrigerator. Yeah, we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. uh, your phone and all these pieces that just sort of float around you. And I started thinking about this, this idea of micro drones. Mm -hmm. And I mean really small ones. Like, like if you could make one like the size of a pixel. Like a really teeny little drone. Mm -hmm. And if you just had, and I was thinking of this for military, because I, I got to go to this like presentation where they were showing these guys walking in the street. And it was real. I mean, it was like, it was actually live feed from like somewhere. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know where. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching this, and it was so intense, you know, because it was it was like watching Halo, oh. except it was real, mm -hmm. you know. And it's like literally guys with, with rifles walking down the street. And I was thinking, what if you had all these little drones that could fly around you, and they could be controlled by you, and you could send them out in front of you 50 feet mm -hmm. or 50 meters mm -hmm. or 500 meters, and they could look around corners and they could spot things. And if you know if they were just the size of a pixel, there could be whole swarms mm -hmm. of them. And I was like, what if everybody had those? Uh, it would be so cool. Mm -hmm. But then you're also like, well, yeah, your drones fight my drones, and we're fighting for space on the subway because my drone swarm is getting in your space, mm -hmm. and it's like and then, then, it, you, then it turns into Neuromancer, where two AIs are vying for control. Well, yeah, yeah, but that, yeah. If you've never read the, the book Neuromancer, it was written by William Gibson back in night. 1987. It was actually written in 1987, and he was he was envisioning so much of the things mm -hmm. that people see today. And he had he had this thing. What were there, one of them's name is Wintermute. What's yeah, Wintermute was and uh, Snow, Snow. No, not Snow Crash. No, uh, that was Neil book. Stevenson. Yeah. Um, I forgot what the other one was. Yeah, but anyway, they two AIs. But anyway, so you know, I think I think that's kind of interesting. You know, where we talk about technologies uh, as they become more and more. Right. Um, you know, and and so, because of all that, then cybersecurity created a whole field mm -hmm. of of work. And it was something that didn't exist. Uh, even just you know, 15 or 17 years ago, there was no such thing as cybersecurity. And I remember when I first started using the term cybersecurity, I'm, I don't know who came up with it, but I started using it. I used to, uh, the first time I was doing this, it was called hacking for fun and profit. <laughs> and I got in all kinds of trouble because I called a class that. But it, it was a very interesting thing. And today it started to expand into just being an entire right. realm, right. you know, like plumbing. Yep. I mean, it literally is like it's like at that level because there is everybody from a technician, mm -hmm. so just somebody who's who's got the very basic skill set who's going out and saying I'm going to plug these things together, mm -hmm. to people that are actually developing those things. So the engineering end of it, and there's companies and there's startups and there's there's large scale companies and small scale companies, and all that comes together to actually create careers in in forensics. Or, or and and uh, in in cybersecurity. Cyber, yeah. So I mean, there's there's three three main areas that that we see people working. One's called pen testing, mm -hmm. which is what I used to do, and and that's a really fun one if you, you don't mind getting tasered occasionally. <laughs> I, I did get tasered, which was not any fun. No, that wouldn't be fun. Yeah, 
Uh, pen testing, if you don't know what that is, is, those are people that go out and try to break into things. Mm -hmm. and, and that can range from physical pen tests. So I want to break into this a building bank vault or something or a bank vault yep. to I want to break into this camera that you're watching through to I want to attack you from a remote location to see if I could get in and find out all these flaws and holes and all these things. And we'll, we'll talk about that in detail sometime. And uh, another huge field uh, there is incident response. Mm -hmm. And I get calls all the time from companies wanting to hire incident responders mm -hmm. because incident response is hard. Uh, these are the EMTs. Yep. So incident responders are people that come blazing in to save you when everything is going down the drain. Like when you call 911, it's fire, emergency, met rescue, and yeah. police. It's right? the people that, that stick that big adrenaline needle in your heart after you OD. But I'm still alive. Yeah, and Pulp Fiction is like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah we're, you know, Speaking and, of gimps before, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're not going back there. You don't want to know what was talking about before the show. One of these days, we're going to get a hot mic and we're all going, yeah. Just, oh, I hit my mic. Yeah, you did. And, and digital forensics. Uh, I also, I, I've always done digital forensics a lot, and I trained all kinds of police officers because back in like the late 90s, police were just starting to get calls mm -hmm. about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of law enforcement had no idea what they were getting calls about. And then as that evolved, today, every single case, I mean, if somebody gets stabbed, there's probably two cell phones involved. You know, and somebody has to analyze those cell phones. Right. There, there may be other devices. And as, as Internet of Things expands, mm -hmm. now there's a stabbing. And um, it, there was a case recently the, the, with, uh, which one was it? Was it Google's or was it, was it Echo or? Which one? We're not supposed to say the name oh. on the show. Oh, Because <laughs> they said it would trigger. Okay, it. yeah. Well, Amazon's, you know, the, yep. the, the yeah. Oh, Alexa. He said it. He, oh, jeez. He said it again. <laughs> I, to, I, I, just I changed told her name. I just, now it's computer because computer. Yeah. Hey, computer. Star Trek. You know? I call it Majel because. Majel? You know what Majel? No. Majel's the actual name of the computer in Star Trek. It is? I didn't even know that. The voice of the computer in Star Trek is Majel, Ma is Majel Barrett. Oh. Who was married to Gene Roddenberry. Interesting. And was one of the writers on the show. Wow. And her voice is the computer. And so the computer's actual name is Majel. They never say it on the show, oh, yeah. but that's what they call wow, it in I had the no script idea. and everything. Yeah. You've out geeked me. Total nerd. Like, when you know that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, it's like, and um, <laughs> I actually got to meet D.C. Fontana once, which was the coolest thing ever. She was a writer on the original mm -hmm. Star mm -hmm. Trek, and uh, she used her initials because she couldn't be a woman writer at the time. Right, 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 right. And uh, I was just, like, at my friend's house, and they were like, oh, yeah, this is D.C. Fontana, and I was with Dorothy Fontana, and I was like, well, that's, wow. <laughs> so, okay, um, but, um, so what is this show going to be about then, the rest of the time? I mean, what, what, what do you want to learn about? I mean, I think that's, that's sort of really what the show is about. What, what do you want to know? Mm -hmm. Because our job here was to help you start to understand a lot of this stuff. And not all of you are cybersecurity professionals or right. want to be cybersecurity professionals, but we want to talk about different topics. And as you'll see, there's, there's several episodes now that we put up that were not viewed live about VPNs. Uh, and there's another one that's up about phishing which was the, the first one that, that I recorded. And uh, so if you want to watch those and check them out, that'll give you some ideas. Uh, we want to talk about topics we think you need to know about so we get to be all powerful and sort of, you know, overbearing and all this kind Only of stuff. Only for a segment or two. Well, yeah, and, and, and you can always, you know, um, <laughs> you can always turn it off with extreme prejudice or something like that. Um, and, and we want to also help to introduce you to complex security ideas. Mm -hmm. So feel free to start to, to follow Secure Dig Life and, and tweet about what you want to know and tell us what you want to know or send emails and, and all that. And we'll be happy to put that on the show because I would like to help you understand. If you want to watch Security Weekly sometime and you say, mm -hmm. what were they talking about? We yeah. could, I'd be happy to explain. Yeah. So I think that's about a wrap. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. So we hope to see you next time. Thanks for tuning in live, if you were live, and if you're not live, well, you know, you know who you are. And we'll be back. This is Doug White and Russ Boschman. See you next time. Take care.